Hi lads, uh, this is the 2012 cash budget, so I'm going to fly through it and make sure you can do the solutions. Um, so we're dealing with um, DIN Limited, a successful retailer. Okay, so you're given a load of information. Um, let's just have a look. So you're given sales for six, mo uh, six months and the total. You're given purchases for six months and the total as well. And the expected selling price is 50 euro. So in order to work out how many sales, it would be the sales revenue divided by the sales price. That will give you how many sales. Um, for sales, this is how it's going to be dealt with. So cash customers, 40% of sales will be for immediate cash and cash discount 5% will be allowed. 60% of sales revenue will be from credit customers these debtors will pay their bills 50% in the month after sale and the remainder in the second month after sale. So basically, if you take July's sales, for example, um, I'll just do it at the side here. So you're going to have 520 paid for immediately 40% with a 5% discount. So basically, times 40% times 95 percent and that will give you the figure then 60 percent is paid thereafter half of that the next month half of that the next month so basically again 520 multiplied by 60 percent multiplied by 50 percent which is basically 30 percent would be paid so this would be paid in july this would be paid in august and then in September, again, you would have 52,000 times 60% times 50%. Um, so you have three months to pay. For purchases, similar sort of thing, except it's two months. Purchases will be paid 50% in the month after purchase with a 2% cash discount. And the remaining purchases will be paid in the second month. So we'll deal with that in a second. Then you're given expenses. Uh, expected costs and capital costs you're asked to do a cash budget and a budgeted profit and loss account so i'm going to fly through this now so first of all we'll deal with cash sales so like i said any workings i'm going to do at the side here so cash sales what i'll show you is how to work out july's and then you can go ahead and do the rest so over here i'll call it note one so for July's figure, so July, if I go back to the question, July is sales 520,000. So what will be paid in July? 520,000, 40% of that. And you're also getting uh, giving 5% discount. So I'm going to multiply that by 95%. Okay, and that will give me my July figure, which in this case will be 197,600. In August, so again, I'm based off 520,000, 520,000 multiplied by... now. If you're good at maths, you can do this in your head, but it's 60% by 50%. So I'm just going to do 30%, which is 156000. And it's the same for September 520 multiplied by 30%. 56000. So basically, the cash sales for July would be 197,600. Then in August, 156,000. In September, 156,000. Okay, and that's going to that's what's going to happen all the way along. So if we if we deal with August, we go back and we look at August sales, 540,000. We're going to do the same thing as up here, 540 times 40% times 95%, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to fill these in. 205200, 162, and 162. 
Okay. Then September would be based on, so go back to September, would be based on 610,000 worth of sales. Do the same thing. It's 231,800. And 183000. 183000. Go and do October. October is based on 630,000. So that would work out at 239400. In November, 189. December, 189. For November, obviously, we're just going to have cash sales and one month because we're only doing as far as December. So that would be 243,200. And then one month uh, is 192,000. And then for December, we're only filling in the cash. Uh, so it would be based on, so if you go to December, 660,000. So 660,000 at 40% at 95 percent which equals two five zero eight hundred now i'm going to total these as well there's no actual marks for the total column um i'm going to use it because it just makes things easier later on okay so that is your sales for purchases so go back to purchases um here we are here, the purchase row. 220 is July. And if I go down here to part three, suppliers, purchases will be paid 50% in the month after purchase when a 2% cash discount will be received and the remaining purchases paid in the se second month after purchases. So over here, we'll do note number two and we shall um, call it, we'll, we'll stick with July. So July, Purchases were 220,000. So basically, uh, ha August, so nothing will be paid in July. In August, you have 220,000 times 50%, and this time times 98%. That takes into account 2% discount. 107,800. And then in September, uh, the remaining half, 50%, and that's 110,000. So again, we just go along. So in July, there'll be, there'll be nothing in July. Uh, that will be paid for in August, the 107,800, and September, the 110. Okay. So it's July's purchases, first half is paid in August, second half September. So then we go to August purchases figure, 240,000. Do the same thing, multiply by 50 and 98, will be paid in September, 117,600. Then in October, 120. Keep keep doing it the whole way along. So I'm just going to fill it in here now. Three two three hundred for September sales and one three five October uh, purchases. Sorry, will be paid initially in November, which will be one three seven two hundred, and then in December one forty. And then this figure here is based off November's purchases, which would be 176400. So again, I'm just going to total these as I go along. Okay. Moving on, the rest of it's quite easy. Wages, so I'll go back to the question. Um, wages, 50,000 per month payable is incurred. So 50,000 the whole way along. Very straightforward. Uh, 
Variable overheads. So variable overheads are um, 10 euro per unit. Okay. So at the beginning of the question, I said we have to work out how many units up here. Okay. So to work out how many units, it's the sales divided by the selling price multiplied by 10. So for, uh, I'll just do a quick example. So I'll write it here. Note three, it would be um, sales divided by selling price multiplied by, in this case, 10 euro. So for July, if we go back to July, be 520,000 divided by 50 multiplied by 10. So for July, it's 520 divided by 50 multiplied by 10. That gives me an answer of 104,000. Okay, so you just do the same for each month. So 104,000. 108, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, Fixed overheads, including depreciation, sixty thousand per month. So we have to we have to work out the depreciation um, here. So let's work out the depreciation. Just delete that. So depreciation is going to be based on down here equipment costing fifty four thousand with an estimated useful life of five years. So I'll do it over here. Note four. Depreciation, 54,000 divided by 5 will give you, will give you 10,800 per year, but we want per month, so divide that by 12 and that gives you 900 per month. So the fixed overheads figure is very simply going to be fixed overheads 60,000 minus 900. So it'll be 59,100 all the way along. That's it. Very easy. Equipment now. Uh, so equipment was bought. Equipment costing 54,000 was purchased on the 1st of July. So on the 1st of July, we're going to have an outgoing of 54,000. And that's it. No other months. Um, and then we're going to look at the loan. This will be partly financed by means of a loan of 48,000. The capital sum is to be repaid in 24 equal installments on starting on the 1st of August. So very straightforward maths. 48,000 divided by 24. 2,000 a month starting in August. So fill that in. Okay. And the last thing we need to do is interest. So interest, um, if we look here, the interest for each month is to be paid on the last day of each month based on the amount of the loan outstanding at that date. So I'll do a note over here. Call it note five. Okay, so the loan interest starts straight away. So just to, for example, July will be based on 48,000, the amount of the loan, times 6%. And make sure you divide that by 12, which would give you 240 euro. August, have to take away the 2,000 loan installment that's been paid. So 46,000 times 6% divided by 12, which in this case gives you 230. Then we do the same for September, which is 44,000 times 
divided by 12, which in this case is 220. Okay, and carry the same, keep going the same way. So 240, 230, 220, 210, 200, 190. Okay, that's everything there. Okay, so I'm just going to, what I need to do, I'm going to go up here, I'm going to add up the receipts. Should have done that up there. So that's, I'm going to highlight these because it's important. Okay, I'm going to do the same for payments. Okay. So in order to finish out, so net cash, so net cash is receipts minus payments. Do that all the way along. That's what you get. Okay, do that all the way along. The bank loan, the bank loan was received in July, that was 48,000. Opening balance. Always look in the question, is there a mention of an opening balance in the bank? In this question, there wasn't any mention of an opening balance. So what we're going to do is we're going to put zero in here and we're going to put zero in the total column as well. And from here, net cash, in this case, plus the bank loan, plus the opening balance gives you the closing balance. So... which is minus 21,740. The closing balance for July is the opening balance for August. And then you do the same thing again. So it's net cash plus opening balance. Okay, closing balance for August, opening balance for September. The same thing again, net cash plus opening balance. Closing cash for September, opening cash for October. Okay, so I'll just keep filling these in. All the way to the second last column, I get three seven one eight three seven one eight one zero. Now I don't do. I, now I go to the total column and I just do my calculation. So net cash plus bank loan plus opening cash should give me the same answer. Three seven eight one zero is my answer. Final answer. Okay, that's cash budget done. Now I'm going to move on to the P&L. Very straightforward, but just a couple of things I need to point out. So I've already done the P&L um, layout. So sales and less cost of sales. If you look at the question, we have sales up here is already given to us. The total sales. Highlight it here. There's your total sales and there's your total purchases. Okay. So put that in. Um, actually, that's in the wrong place. So sales, uh, 3.6 million. Purchases, 1.75 million. Okay, labor. So we're taking these figures from the total columns that I had in the previous part. So let's go down to wages. 300,000 is the total. So, labour, 300,000. 
variable overheads and fixed overheads again variable overheads 720,000 fixed overheads 354,600 72,000 oh, sorry 720,000 354,600 okay so we add up the cost of sales. And we take it away from the sales in order to get net uh, gross profit. So 3.6 million minus this figure here gives us a gross profit of 475,400. I'll just underline this so you know there's a calculation taking place. Okay. Four seven five four hundred. Then we take away our expenses. In this case, we have depreciation of equipment, and we have discount allowed. So depreciation of equipment. Remember, over in this note here, note four, depreciation is nine hundred euro per month. We are asked. We have been asked to do the P and L for six months. So very straightforward. The depreciation is just going to be 900 times 6, 5,400. Okay. Discount allowed. I'm going to do a note over here for discount allowed. Okay, so discount allowed is going to be based on total sales, which is 3600000. Times the 40%, which is paid immediately, times 5%, which is the discount figure. And that gives me a figure of 72,000. 72,000. So we shall add these two together. Okay, so we're going to take this figure away from this figure up here. Three nine eight zero zero zero. We're going to add discount received. So discount received again. I'm going to do a note up here. Discount received. Now discount received is based on purchases. Now, you don't take the full 1750000 figure because, remember, uh, purchases are paid for in the month after purchase. So we don't actually include the December figure. So that's very important. So we have the 1750000. Take away the 380000 from December. And then multiply that by... 50% and then multiply it by 2% to get the discount. You get a figure of 13,700. 13,700. We're going to add that on. It gives us 411,700. Just put a line there so we know it's a calculation. And also here. Okay, so we're 411700. Then we're going to take away our interest. So go back to this one. That's why I did the total. Total interest is 1290. So less interest. So minus 1290. Gives us a final net profit figure of 410410. That's our final figure. Okay, now the last bit of the question was a bit of theory. What factors should be taken into account uh, by DIN in arriving at the expected sales of 360,000 for the six months? Okay, so what are the factors arriving at the sales figure? Is this a budget, remember? So you're going to base it on stuff like what were last year's sales? So down here. What were last year's sales? So you'll base it on that. Market research, opinions of sales managers and sales representatives. 
this is a budget, so they're just estimates. Trends, state of the economy, whether things are growing or uh, going down. The price to be charged, the sales price, is that going up or down? Competition in the market, is it a luxury or a necessity? Will people still buy it? Or uh, if it's a luxury and price goes up, people won't buy it. Okay, so you'd need probably three of the three of these to ensure the five marks. Okay, thanks for watching.